Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, and welcome to today's talk about psychology. I presume you're all here because you want to do psychology, or you want to sign up to do psychology. Um, my name is Fiona Newell, and I'm a professor in the School of Psychology here in Trinity College. And my particular interests are um, human perception. So I teach lectures on um, how the sensory systems take in information from the outside world and how the brain deals with that information and what parts of the brain deal with different types of, of information that is sent to the brain from skin, from hearing, from vision. So that's my um, uh, background and I am a, an experimental psychologist. I work in a, lab a laboratory. Okay, so I'm going to go through um, what it is that we teach uh, and what it is um, that psychology is all about at an undergraduate level here in Trinity College. Um, and, but I would like you to ask questions as I go along, or maybe if you prefer to wait till the end, that's absolutely fine. But if you have any questions at all, please free, feel free to ask them at any point. Um, but I hope that after my little um, talk here, that you'll have a much better idea of what it is, what it means to study psychology here in, uh, in Trinity. So this is the outline of the talk today. I'm going to talk about what is psychology and what it's not. Um, I want to talk about popular misconceptions about what it means to study psychology and what you think you're going to get out of the course. This is very important because it's often misunderstood um, what um, a degree in psychology means. Um, I'm going to talk specifically about our course here in Trinity and I'll also give you a little bit of a background into what our recent graduates from um, our degree course in psychology have got up to since so that you'll have an idea of what you can do um, in the future. So before I go on I just wanted to say you're all very welcome here and um, I hope that uh, you'll take this opportunity to get as much information as you possibly can out of, um, out of this little talk here today. So psychology is a science. That's the bottom line. Um, and uh, it's the scientific study of behavior. And we, each of us, different psychologists in the School of Psychology have a different way in which we study behavior. So behavior is very wide and very broad idea. And we each take different parts of that and we study it. Um, and we teach on this as well. It's the study of behavior of individuals and groups and their mental processes. And their mental processes, of course, are stemmed by um, what happens in the brain. So we are particularly interested in understanding how the brain supports our behaviors and our responses. So the particular course in Trinity, I'll talk about this in a second, is heavily based on understanding brain function. So, um, uh, so it um, highlights various issues. So because psychology is a science, it means it's theory driven. And that means that we test theories. We propose hypotheses that, we, do, uh, that we, we test in various ways. And I'll explain the various ways that we test these hypotheses. Um, but it is theory driven. So there are, there's a lot of reading in the course about what different theories have been proposed to explain behavior X. So for example, if you're interested in studying, um, let's say, autism, um, then you might want to understand the literature. And what does the literature say about the development of autism in childhood or in later adulthood? And it's theory driven. Um, and there are very few definitive answers in, in um, psychology. So a lot of the research that we're doing is organic. It helps us build on the understandings that we have. And it's firmly based on research. And our course is firmly based on research as well. So an, an amazing number of phenomena are investigated by psychologists. But they're all based on, on um, our behavior. And so here's just a very small snapshot of the kind of things that we study here um, in Trinity. I'm interested in perception. Um, others are interested in, in aging, what happens when we get older. Um, learning, memory, social mobility, um, cultural differences, 
uh, group processes, communication, vision, ergonomics, dyslexia, neuroplasticity. This is only a small snapshot of the kind of topics that we are interested in in our School of Psychology and that we teach on in the School of Psychology. It's bo both a pure science, in other words, um, that means we test these hypotheses, and it's an applied science. We go out into the field with our ideas of how things should work, and we consult and we develop um, ways in which the, the field can improve based on psychological um, theory. So if psychology is a science and it's theory driven, then it must be supported by evidence. And that's what we're here, that's what we're about. We're about gathering evidence and to support or refute different types of theories. So what we want to instill in you as students of psychology, we want you to learn the tools to properly investigate um, behaviors in others. So by the time you graduate, you will know how to understand better and how to investigate better different types of behavioral processes. Because we're going to take you through four years of learning the scientific basis of, um, of our behavior as human beings. And you're going to learn that from two points of view, based on the literature that is already existing, but also on, based on hands-on experience. Um, learning how to test different ideas. We do a lot of laboratory work. My particular inter research interests are laboratory based. So we do a lot of experimentation in the lab, which means that we can measure, for example, because I'm interested in perception, how fast you can do something or how fast you can see something. So one of my particular topics is how do we recognize other people's faces? So I would uh, typically, as an experimental psychologist, present you with a list with a series of faces, and I want you to tell me as fast as you can whether that person is familiar or not familiar. And I might manipulate some of the features of the face, because I want to try and understand how the brain knows one person from another, because we all look the same, right? We've all got the ba same basic configuration, but we are brilliant at this task. And I want to understand, by doing laboratory-based testing, how the brain figures that out. And that's just one aspect. Um, a lot of us in the School of Psychology use a different tool, which is called neuroimaging. So we can put electrodes on, um, on the scalp and measure the electrical output of the brain to different stimulation. Or um, we also have an MRI scanner here in Trinity. So we can look at how different parts of the brain are activated depending on how and on what stimuli we present to the person that's in the, in the scanner. So what we're trying to do is build up a much better idea of how the brain supports behavior. And that's the basis, really, of the course that you're, um, you're going to embark on. We also do field studies. So we might go out into, and work in hospitals, for example. Um, at an undergraduate level, this is probably not going to happen, but this might be something that you might gear up towards um, at a post postgraduate level. We use surveys and interviews. Um, we, use, uh, we look at um, maybe databases that have existed for a while, um, and we also use observation. So observation is a very important tool, especially when you are testing individuals that may not um, be able to tell you what they're, um, what they're seeing or may not be able to press those button boxes. And the group of people I have in mind, of course, are babies. Babies can't tell you um, uh, what they're thinking at any one time or what they're looking at. But we can observe where they're looking. And we can measure how long it takes them to look at one thing or, um, or another one. And that helps us build up a better understanding of what babies can see, how babies are developing language, etc. Um, there are very common and popular misconceptions about what a course in psychology is all about. And here are some of them. So it's often told uh, to us um, that psychology is just simply testing common sense. Um, so for example, the more people are present at the scene of an emergency, the more likely the victims are to receive help. That's just basically common sense. And, and a lot of people think, well, isn't psychology just that then? Well, no, it's not, because this is not necessarily the case. You have things, a well-known um, uh, effect in psychology called bystander apathy. 
um, which means that you can have a very large crowd of people witnessing a crime scene, etc., and no one gets involved. And the question is from a psychologist, um, is not a judgmental one, but what is it that makes us behave that way? Why might we be apathetic in a group scenario when we're faced with trauma like that? Um, so behavior is, is predicted by um, people's attitudes, for example, as well. And another popular misconception is that psychology is often concerned um, with, uh, with which contradictory common sense ideas are true. So here's an example of one adage, too many cooks uh, spoil the broth, and the other one, many hands make light work. So which is true? And is that what we as psychologists are engaged in? Well, I can tell you it's not. Um, and so th this is some of the common um, myths about studying psychology, that it's really just in pursuit of finding the truth behind some of these adages. These adages can help us pose hy hypotheses um, that we can test then deliberately in, um, in the laboratory or in the field, but this is not what the focus of um, being a psychologist is all about. Now, uh, in, in particular, um, I also want to tell you that psychology is not um, psychiatry. And the difference between psychiatry and psychology is that basically a psychiatrist has a medical degree. Um, so they can prescribe drugs. Whereas a psychologist, and, and what I'm talking about now in particular, is a clinical psychologist. A clinical psychologist um, can offer therapies um, but not uh, drugs. But often clinical psychologists work very closely together with psychiatrists. Now, one thing to note if you're interested in doing an undergraduate course in psychology is that you will not, it's very unlikely that you will be um, trained um, in any of the therapies um, in any deep way. Um, to become a, a, a psychological therapist, so for example, to become a clinical psychologist or a counselor, that requires further training. So at the end of your four-year degree in psychology, you will not um, be sufficiently trained to offer therapy, um, but you will be sufficiently trained to understand what methodologies would help you better, uh, form a better um, idea of um, what type of um, problem a person might have. Psychology won't help you if you're trying to f get a better understanding of who you are as an individual. It absolutely will not help you, um, and this is not what the degree course is about. And the other thing is that there is a lot of statistics uh, in our um, course. So uh, if you think that by taking psychology that you're escaping from maths, that's not the case. We have to work with numbers because numbers are data. And because psychology is a theory-driven topic, um, of course it's going to generate a lot of data and you are going to learn the mathematical skills to deal with those data and to um, analyze um, different types of data. There is a huge component of the psychology course is um, statistics-based. So beware of that because many people get a shock when they come and to our course and because they think, oh, this is going to be a lot of Freud, etc. I don't think you're ever going to come across Freud in your, in your course. Um, and it is not also a complete explanation of human behavior. Um, you'll find, as I said, very few concrete answers. That's because we're in pursuit of a better understanding of human behavior, but there are very few con concrete um, answers. And in fact, some of the laws and principles and that you often find in scientific disciplines pertain to human perception. So we have some laws that we know about how light is taken in by the brain, et cetera, and how we behave. And this is called psychophysics. So if you're interested in what actual laws and what actual rules there are in psychology, then look up the domain of psychophysics um, and you'll find some interesting answers there. there these are the points that we, um, from last year, so if you're thinking of signing up for single honours, then last year's points were um, 545. And, <clears throat> but if you're thinking of doing two subject moderatorship, so you take psychology along with something else, um, then that's 570 points. These points are high. I wouldn't have a chance to get in uh, now, nowadays. And we recognize that. But that's because so many people want to do psychology. But it's important that you choose psychology for the right reasons and not because you've gained the points. 
If you're interested in understanding human behavior, if you're um, aware and ready to apply statistical approaches, to learn about theories, to learn about the different methodological approaches um, to understand human behavior, then this is, this is the course for you. If you're interested in doing further education to become a counselor, for example, then this is the course for you. Um, but that's a long, that's, that's a long haul um, thing. That's seven years starting from today. Um, four years undergraduate and three years postgraduate. Um, we, have, we take in 50 students every year, and this is HEA defined, so we take in 30 single honours and 20 TSM students. Um, and we have a unique system, we, may, we have tutorial groups, so we take um, three students, a little, maybe sometimes a, little, a few more, um, in, a, in small little meetings um, to discuss um, different topics in psychology. And we have a large emphasis on practical work, so you'll be doing a lot of lab-based work, etc. Um, and we teach generic skills, skills that are not just uh, pertinent to psychology, but that um, are, are germane. Um, there are 25 full-time members in, the, uh, in this school, um, and we categorize ourselves depending on the kind of research that we're interested in, or whether we're um, involved in the more therapeutic end of psychology. So those of us that teach on the undergraduate course um, classify ourselves as either cognitive neuroscientists, which means that we use MRI, um, a MRI neuroimaging, um, but there are others that are interested in how we reason as individuals, how we remember things, um, and what is the brain basis of memory. Um, so these are just a, just a snapshot um, of some of the things that we're interested in here as researchers. Um, we're also interested in neuropsychology, so what happens um, to individuals who are patients uh, for whatever reason. They could be patients in a, in a hospital because they have um, experienced some brain trauma. So, uh, for example, we work with patients that might have um, hit uh, this side of their head, and typically if you damage that part of the brain, you are left with an inability to recognize familiar faces, you're left with an inability to recognize objects, familiar objects that are around you, um, and you can, be, uh, um, you can have an inability to, to, um, to recognize words, etc. So we've mapped out the brain pretty well in terms of the little areas that are involved in different tasks. If you fell backwards and hit this part of your brain, then you've knocked out the visual system, which will render you blind, however, not um, completely blind, unaware. Of, of, what, of your visual surroundings, but, um, a, but not completely um, blind. We're interested in the relatedness between health and culture. So for example, are you more likely to be healthy if you come from a particular part of Ireland versus another part? Or um, what is it about um, the relationship between um, well-being and your geographical um, location? Um, we're also interested, a, a group of us are uh, um, called applied psychologists, and we might be interested in road safety. What makes people behave like lunatics in, on the road? Um, and how can we maintain road safety um, and transport safety and driver behavior? And then um, a number of, uh, uh, of us in, in psychology are interested in developmental psychology. How do we learn to um, acquire language? Uh, and what is it that babies are interested in and how do they, how do they um, understand uh, um, what you're saying to them. So um, uh, you may know this already, but that psychology at Trinity was ranked in the top um, 10 schools in Europe and um, in the top 50 in the world in the QS um, world rankings um, recently. So we're very proud of that. It's not just due to the undergraduate course, but also because of the research that we do here. So our course, I have to emphasize again, is very much research driven. So you are going to learn not just what's in the books, but also live information, if you like, because there are so many of us that are interested in research in Trinity. Okay, so after your degree, let's say you've got onto the course and you've um, you've done fantastically well. Four years later, what can you be? Um, well, many of our students go on to become, um, to study further, to become qualified in a particular domain within psychology. So, for example, many students are interested in becoming clinical psychologist or counselor. Um, many go on to become um, an occupational psychologist, so working in the workplace, for example, or in hospitals. Um, many uh, 
go on to further uh, education in educational psychology, working in schools, how can we um, improve the school curriculum um, in order to um, benefit children's education. Criminal forensic psychology has been a recently uh, popular idea. Sports psychology, um, and uh, some, some of you might even end up working with Rory McElroy um, in 20 years' time. And, um, and then the, those of us who failed at all the top of it um, do research, basically. <laughs> um, and this is a snapshot of um, what our recent graduates ended up doing. So you'll see that about 38% of them went on to further study. So many students who take psychology have already got an idea of what they would like to do with that degree later on. Um, so they might want, they already know that they may want to do clinical psychology, or they may already know that they want to become an academic um, and continue to do um, research. Um, but that's typically not the case for first years. Usually um, that desire develops over the four years. And I've had some students who I've taught as undergraduates who then ended up doing a PhD with me or went on um, to other universities in the UK and the US to do a PhD. 11% um, are currently seeking uh, employment. 33% um, have gained employment. Now, another important take home message is that a degree in psychology is, is practically non vocational, which means that. Um, you can find graduates of psychology in many different domains, from accountancy, market research, to the police, etc. Um, so it's, in many aspects, psychology is a very broad degree, um, and, and it's non-vocational. So it will allow you to pursue um, you know, a career in the private sector, let's say, or even other aspects of the public sector, um, and, and provide you with the, with the basic skill set to do well um, in any of those jobs. And there's some of the list of the employers here. Further study courses, this is a very um, brief snapshot of some of the courses that you could do. You could do a PhD if you're interested in research and if you want to become an academic. Um, you could do a master's in criminology if that um, is, is what interests you. Um, you could do, uh, a, a lot of our graduates take um, an MSc course in applied psychology, which will give you, which, in, in, which takes a year and you will study different modules that will then help you decide whether or not you want to do clinical psychology or counseling later on. Many of our graduates do a degree, uh, a master's in neuroscience. So really looking deep into the brain and the me brain mechanisms that support our behavior. So what is, is it about the electrochemical constitution of the brain that mediates the way that we behave? Um, many do PhDs in child, adolescent, or educational psychology, so these would be taught PhD programs where you do a little bit of research in your third year, but mainly it's, um, these are taught courses. Um, and some have gone on to do um, a degree in medicine, and others have, have stayed on in psychology. Okay, and these are some of the institutions here that, um, in, in the island of Ireland that support further study if you're interested in, in, in becoming qualified as a, as a psychologist. Okay, so um, these are some frequently asked questions, but maybe I should stop it there and maybe you should be the ones to ask the questions because you, I don't want to tell you stuff that you already know or maybe I, uh, um, and I, or I want to give you the chance to, um, for me to answer some of the questions it may not already know. Does anybody have um, any questions that they would like to ask? Now is your chance. Yes, in the green jumper. You, there is, so you mean the UK or England specifically? The UK. So um, there's the, the question is, is our degree course um, recognized by the British Psychological Society? And the answer is yes. Um, and uh, so we have here in Ireland the Irish Psychological Society, but they're in tandem with the BPS. Um, so uh, the Irish Psychological Society accredits our course and it's consequently then recognized by the BPS. Okay, so you could easily do a, a postgraduate course in the UK, and likewise, UK students can come here um, to do postgraduate courses. Okay, any other questions? 
which, which oh, <laughs> thank you. Okay, so the research is very wide and varied. Um, so uh, off the top of my head, if I can remember my, all my colleagues, um, there are developmental psychologists who are interested in how language is uh, um, developed um, and how babies acquire language skills. Um, other developmental psychologists are interested in um, what is it about your home environment and whether you're adopted or not. Um, so the question was, what other types of research is going on in the School of Psychology? And um, sorry, I should repeat that because you probably can't hear that up there. Um, yeah, another developmental psychologist is interested in and what it means to grow up in Ireland, what it means if you're adopted or not adopted, and what effects that has. Um, others are interested in the neurobiology of memory and the neurobiology, um, uh, so really looking at models of memory that can be applied to humans. Um, others are interested in neural rehabilitation. So if, as we get older, for example, or if, if we've sustained some trauma to the brain, how can you best rehabilitate that function in somebody who's um, had a, a brain trauma? So some of us are interested in that. Um, and uh, there are others who are interested in driving behavior. So what makes uh, what is behind the demographics that we all know about that young males are, tend to have more accidents than older males or females? What's the basis of behind that? Why is that the case? Um, others are interested in um, cultural um, differences. So one of my colleagues works in Africa a lot, looking at um, health systems there and how it supports different types of um, behaviors that are related to health. Uh, and yeah, and I've stretched as far, but that's a, a snapshot of what we're interested in. Uh, others are interested in cognition, how we reason, how, how we make decisions. Um, why, do we make, why do we decide when we go out to, uh, you know, to buy one type of product and not another? Um, and other of us, uh, others are interested in group behavior um, as well. So that's a, a, a snapshot. But you can find all our interests are on the website. So if you're particularly interested in what we do, have a look and also have a look at publications that we might have, uh, uh, th that are available. Are there any other questions? Yes, at the back, yeah. Uh, our lectures are divided up into um, credits, if, um, if you like. So um, I teach, my perception course that I teach to um, fresh, freshman students um, is 22 hours of lecturing in one term. And that's just one course that they would take. So um, the, uh, you would, uh, I don't remember how many you would have, and, and it depends on what year as well, because in fourth year, you'll do research. So a lot of your time will be taken up by um, your research project. But in first year, um, it's almost a pyramidal system. In first and second years, you will have many lectures um, to go to. In third and fourth years then, it's a lot more um, about uh, the research program that you have. But I would say about, I'm guessing now, but I think about, uh, I would say about 20 hours um, a week, something like that. Um, you know about TSM and, yes? Can I, uh, no, the, the gentleman there with the, the hoodie. Uh, yes, you, you. The difference between them um, is that you take essentially half the course of psychology. You take the core courses um, in psychology, so there are foundation courses that you have to take, um, but then you take half of your other subject and half of the, uh, of the psychology. There are some things that you, everyone has to take. Everyone has to do, uh, for example, a research project in fourth year if you decide to do that stream. Um, you take tutorials, uh, you take practical classes, etc. But there might be some lectures, uh, lecture modules that you wouldn't take necessarily. You would take half of them and then the rest is occupied by your second course. Might even be mentioned here. Um, I think I have covered uh, most of those. But there was another question behind you, actually. Or was it behind you? No. There was another question here around that area. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So say that again. Does, so good question. Does how your personality develops or anybody's personality develop come into the course? I would say no. So well, I'll tell you what, one of the things that the students are quite um, surprised by is how much biology is in our course. 
So how much, you know, how much emphasis we put on the brain and how the brain um, supports these types of behaviors. All right. Yes, another question. If you did the MSc in applied psychology, what are you qualified to do? You're not qualified um, yet, but that would be, um, it, it would be, it's seen as a pathway to do clinical psychology, if you like. So it introduces you to some of the modules that you'd be interested, that you would take as part of your doctorate program in, in clinical psychology. psychology. Um, so that's the way our particular course is organized here. It is taught and directed by clinical psychologists. So it's ma mainly about um, if, you, if, you, if that's the way you wanted to go, you would take that um, master's course. Clinical psychology as a doctorate uh, program is highly competitive. Very few people get into it. Yes, right at the back there, yeah. You. <laughs> Does doing TSM limit, limit you uh, from doing? No, not at all. No, no, no. Yeah. Any, was there another question? Yes, in the pink. That's a very good question. So the question is, if you don't get into psychology this time, are there other ways? And absolutely categorical, yes. There are many ways to get into psychology. So don't be disappointed if you don't get in as a single honors or a TSM student. There are many ways. So for example, you might take another degree and um, you can take a conversion course. It's called our higher diploma course. You take psychology with us for two years and that allows you then um, to, be read, to be registered if you like. As a, that gives you sufficient experience on our undergraduate psychology degree to allow you to, to do um, further postgraduate work. Um, there are many ways to do psychology. Don't get disheartened if you can't. 50, we can only take 50 of you, that's terrible. We should be able to take all of you. Um, but um, don't get disheartened. There, if psychology is your main focus, there are many other ways to do it, okay? Yeah, oh sorry, yeah, you're in the dark up there. <laughs> If you did a year abroad, are there what? Sorry? OK, so we have an Erasmus program where students can go abroad for a year. Um, but I don't know what the program is. I think the admissions office would be better able to answer that. Um, I'm not completely um, aware of that. Sorry about that. But I do know that students do go abroad for a year um, to get um, different perspectives. Right up at the top there, yes. In politics, yeah. applications of absolutely, that's a hotbed for understanding be how people behave, right? Um, so, uh, so are there any applications in politics? There are no formal um, courses that I know about, uh, but there, there is such thing as political psychology, so understanding how politicians um, behave. But, so a very good example of that is um, people who write speeches for, um, for leaders. Um, they may want to ensure that, that that speech has a particular content because they know that if they mention the word economy, 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 multiple times, that's going to have, you know, not everyone's going to switch off after a while. So they, so they understand um, language processing. So that's a very good example of where psychologists might get involved. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. You might... In the course? Um, there is, a, I think, a module uh, in, in final year, but I don't know if it'll still be available uh, um, uh, in four years' time. But I think, yeah, there is something to do with political psychology, I think, in fourth year. Yeah, there was a question over here. Um, what subjects do you believe for the TSM? For the TSM? Okay, I'll read them out to you. Yeah. Economics, English literature, French, geography, Italian, mathematics, music, Near Eastern and Jewish studies, philosophy, religion and theology, and sociology. So we get a, actually we get a lot of our TSM students who've taken a language as, a, as their second um, as their second course. Yes. Uh, it's absolutely impossible to hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just the point system. It's a meritocracy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you want more details about how that uh, occurs, the admissions office will be able to answer that. We have absolutely nothing at school level. We have nothing to do with the admissions. 
That's a different office, if you like. <laughs> and we just teach the people who come in to us. Yeah. Yes? Do you think any subjects Of that list that I said to you? Yes, but not anything else. Pardon? So the question was, can you pick any topic um, within Trinity um, as part of your second subject? And the answer is no. It has to be restricted to these, um, to these um, topics. So no, it would be nice if you could take, say, for example, a science subject or something like that. But because we're in the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, um, this restricts the kind of topics that you can take. One last question. Uh, who wants to ask the last final question? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah. No, but why are you wearing a Harvard t-shirt? <laughs> um, oh, it depends on what you want to do. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, it depends on what you want to do. If you're thinking about doing postgraduate work, then it's pro and you're very specific about that, then choose the single honors option, because that will get you much more exposure to the course and to the different types of um, uh, the different types of psychology that is, uh, that is available. And if you have a clear idea that you want to become a clinical psychologist, for example, then take the single honors course. That's my. If not, then as I said to you before, psychology is a non-vocational degree, um, so it provides you with a basic education that will that is um, you know uh, um, relevant for many many different types of uh, jobs. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.